Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to talk about LUTs and a LUT uh, stands for lookup table. And what it effectively does is allow you to map tones and color values from one value to another, thereby quickly with a click or two, adjusting those tone and color values in your photos. So it operates kind of like a preset or a look or a template, depending on the name of how you know what those edits are called in the app that you choose to use but it operates kind of like that but they're very different than presets and i wanted to talk about in this video how i'm using LUTs why i'm using LUTs and how cool they are and why i've really sort of developed an appetite for them lately now a couple of years ago in luminar they added a LUT filter which allowed you to apply custom LUTs to luminar and that was really my first exposure to them in photography They've been used in videography and cinematography for years to apply, again, a specific color look to a film or video, things like that. But in the last couple of years, they've been added to various photo editors, and I think that's a pretty neat idea. And so something happened recently, and I'll just show you right here. Um, I use Pixelmator. I make a few videos about it. It's a fun app that has a lot of power. It's kind of Photoshop-like, but it's much easier and certainly a lot cheaper. But they added a custom LUT tool recently. So I've been playing around with LUTs and I've just been making a number of LUTs and kind of having fun with them. And so what I wanted to do is kind of walk through where I am with LUTs and kind of where I'm going. So what I used to do is I'd come in here and you know maybe make some adjustments like this and I'm just kind of making it up as I go here. But uh, I just wanted to kind of show you what's happening. Uh, so I might would come in and do some things like this. And then I'd say, oh, that's pretty nice. Let me show you the before and after. There's before, there's after, decent looking color look. And so you might would save that as a preset or something. But now with the custom LUT tool, you're able to export these edits as a LUT. So I've been doing that where I come in here and you can come in here and choose your own LUT. Uh, if you've made them, uh, you know, reuse it. You can choose LUTs that you download from other websites. Uh, and of course, there's a number of LUTs built here into Pixelmator. But what I've been doing is creating my own LUTs by making adjustments here. And then on this little three dot thing to the next of the filter, I just click uh, export adjustments as LUT. And so that's giving me a lot of uh, fun and creative out output here, basically. So let me hit reset. Let me close these tools and let me show you. I've got a LUT here. I'm going to go ahead and just choose that. It's called Sunset Intensity. Now, it's very much over the top, as the name implies. It is intense, very colorful. But if you look at that, that's probably too much. But you have this intensity slider here in Pixelmator, and you can just adjust that to your taste. But the nice thing is I've done nothing else to the photo. I've just added a LUT, and I was able to go from that photo to that photo. And so this is what I've been doing. I've been creating LUTs here in Pixelmator, and the great thing about it is they are independent of the software that they're made in. It's a universal format. It's a .cube, C-U-B-E file, and those cube files work in any app that will support a LUT. So Luminar, On1, Exposure X6, Lightroom, Photoshop, Affinity, you name it, that's a portable format. So that gives you a lot of flexibility in your editing and allows you to consistently have the same look regardless of the editor that you choose. And so let me show you here in Luminar, I've got this same photo. I'm gonna click Choose LUT, Load Custom LUT File. And again, I've got a number of LUTs here and I'm gonna click Open and that applies it automatically. Now it defaults to 30. I'm gonna go ahead and move that to 100. And you can see that that is gonna look very much like that at 100. Now I have noticed that on files in the different apps, they sometimes interpret things a little bit differently. So it could vary somewhat from app to app, but that and that look pretty darn similar. So again, you can just come in here and make these adjustments. But the other cool thing is, as I said, it operates independent of a preset. Now in Luminar, if you use Luminar AI, you know it's called a template. So I'm gonna click on templates. I'm gonna get this clean light and apply that template to my photo. But let's say I still want the color pop from that sunset intensity LUT. So I'm gonna go load a custom LUT. I'm gonna grab sunset intensity and stick it on there. At 30, I think it looks pretty good. At 100, it's way over the top, of course, but you know, at 30 or even 20, that looks pretty good. It gives it a nice little color pop that's in addition to whatever the template applied. So one more time, there it is before the LUT, but with the template, and then once I've added the LUT to the template, I've got that.
Now, as I said, they're software independent. And so if you've been around here very long, you know that I've also been using on one quite a bit and hey, they have a LUT tool. So once again, add filter, choose LUTs. And I've been importing all these LUTs that I make into a personal folder here. So you can kind of see, I've got a number of different ones, but I'm just going to scroll down here to my sunset intensity. And again, way over the top, totally get that. Um, I don't even like that to be honest, but you have the opacity slider here. So you can reduce that as needed. Or one of the great things about on one is luminosity masking. I can come in here, choose a luminosity mask and create that, add it automatically. And so here that LUT is applied with a luminosity mask. So there it is before and there it is after. And of course, I still have the opacity slider if I want to. So by doing it with a luminosity mask and the opacity slider, I'm able to dial in it, uh, the look that, of that LUT specifically to my photo. So there it is beforehand and there it is after. So that's why I'm really getting into LUTs. I'm having so much fun with them and it's super powerful, super flexible, and as I said, can be used in combination with other edits. Gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of power. If you would like to stay up to date on what I'm doing with these LUTs, because I'm probably going to make a LUT pack and sell it on my blog, there's a link down below to my website. It's just jimnix.com. You can join my newsletter there. I send out a newsletter about every couple of months. No spam. I, I don't send it a lot, but if you want to stay aware of these kind of things, feel free to join that newsletter down below. Otherwise, I will also do a video about it here on YouTube, so don't hesitate to subscribe as well. Hope this gives you some ideas about how you can create. And even if you don't create LUTs, you can find some free LUTs online. And you can, of course, use LUTs that are built into the various products because both On One and Luminar have built in LUTs as well. A lot of power, a lot of flexibility, and frankly, just a lot of fun. That's how I'm using LUTs. That's why I'm loving them. Hope it gives you some ideas for your own photos. Thanks for watching, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you really soon. And adios.